hey, did you guys hear that based upon the success they've had with the uh, Call of Duty franchise, Infinity Ward is actually getting a hold of the Star Trek franchise? It's kind of a, a big deal. I've not seen a really good Star Trek game for a while. I never tried the Star Trek online or anything. Um, but it's kind of neat, the, the direction they're going with it. They're actually producing uh, a kind of a sim, um, next gen. You're on the uh, Enterprise and everything. But it's actually a dating sim where you get to groom the different characters and get them set up to uh, meet all the other people. Uh, starring the security chief. It's going to be called Modern Wharf Hair. You're welcome for that. Now, um, what I wanted to talk about today was somebody, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about the brief note I made the other day about uh, anime conventions having a very different sort of sexuality than uh, comic conventions. Specifically the example, um, he asked what I was talking about when I said that me and my friends uh, Wes and James were kind of bound together by this really weird experience um, at one particular con. Um, it's nothing embarrassing for us, it was just a really weird situation. Um, on the drive down, uh, me, my friend Jenny, Wes, Mark, and Faith are all driving down from the West Virginia-Ohio border all the way down to Virginia Beach. So I'm thinking this was either uh, Katsukon, Nekocon, I don't remember which one is which. One, one is Crystal City, Virginia, one was Virginia Beach. <coughs> I believe it was probably 2001. On the way down, we were doing Mad Libs, because I love Mad Libs. Mad Libs, I still think, are probably the best thing ever. Um, half the time I take like work reports and stuff people write up, and I'll take out keywords, just make my own office Mad Libs, just to be stupid, but Mad Libs are fantastic. We're doing Mad Libs, and one of them that we were going through was a letter from camp. And somehow, I believe it was Wes, um, the, the camp name ended up being Camp Bukaki. Because that's where we were <laughs> mentally, shit, a solid decade ago. We were making fun of all these stupid, terrible things, talking about the ring and everything came up in a bunch of our Mad Libs. Um, <coughs> this damn cough will not go away. Anyways, Camp Bukaki became this huge joke for us over this like seven, hour, seven, eight hour drive, forget what it was. Um, we get to the hotel and our rooms aren't um, adjacent. We meet up with another couple groups of friends, uh, including my friend uh, James, um, I don't know, probably four or five other folks all came down. And uh, on one of the doors, on, on Wes and Faith and Sofield's rooms, we put a sign, you know, welcome to Camp Bukaki, ask for Wes just being obnoxious, as you would at that point. And we meet someone whose name I don't even remember. Uh, I have pictures of her on the Pona <coughs> anime video. I think uh, she's dressed as Claha from Malice Miser. I just knew her, I, I don't know her name. I, we called her Jailbait because she was underage and she was hanging out with us drinking, whatever. But, um, she or someone else knew how to write Camp Bukaki in Japanese. At least she said she did. She could have wrote, you know, Camp Potato Chips for all I know. I don't <laughs> read or write Japanese. Uh, here in Ghana, Kata, I don't know. But, so I was up on the board and we just think nothing of it. We're just being stupid. And it was Friday night or Saturday night. I think it might have been Saturday night. Uh, James and I were out on the convention floor doing some shopping, watching some shows, whatever. But we're down there, and uh, to show how fucking old this was, I didn't have a cell phone or anything at the time, so we were communicating um, via walkie-talkie. I had like a set of Radio Shack walkie-talkies. They were good walkie-talkies, mind you, but yeah. So we're walking through, and we get this sort of, you know, you know, you know come in, Brian, are you there? Yes, uh, Wes, what, what, what can we do for you? And he says, uh, Brian, get James, come up with the 40 dudes, Somebody's here for Camp Bukaki. I look over at James and I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, Wes, can you explain a little bit uh, further? Well, what's going on? He said, just what I said. There's someone here in my hotel room. They say they're here for the Bukaki. <laughs> and James and I are just like, what the fuck is going on? We have to go check this out. We had no idea what to expect. It was just a weird situation. And so we get in the elevator and we're going up, whatever, eight or nine stories and talking the whole way like, what the fuck is this? And we get to the room and it's Wes. Uh, I think, 
vent. Fucking nightshade. Fucking nightshade was there. Um, <coughs> and then me and James come in, and sure enough, there's a, a guy, like shoulder length, dark hair, um, and a his girlfriend. I think, I think it was a girlfriend. Light skinned black girl, um, dressed up as Anthe, from Utna. Yeah. Um, he said his name was Forrest and her name was Kamika and they were there for the Bukaki. And I was like, holy shit. And so I, we don't know what to say. Me and James and Wes are just looking like, oh my God, what? So we say, hey, do, do you, you guys, you guys know what the Bukaki is, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And we met Wes. I'm like, okay, great. Um, would you like a drink? No, no, we're just here. And <coughs> we had no idea how we're supposed to approach this situation. Like, are we actually supposed to round up a couple more guys and just straight, you know, on this random black girl's face? We had no fucking idea what to do. I was living with my girlfriend at the time. Wes and Faith were together at the time. I think James might have been the only single guy in the room. Fucking nightshade. Dude's, uh, it's not his last name, but if you call a fucking guy Nightshade, yeah, he was probably just fucked up at the time, so he probably didn't even remember this happening. Um, but we sat there, just frozen and in silence, just staring at this attractive uh, young lady and her apparently uh, very persuasive boyfriend, and we just froze. None of us were actually going to whip it out and, like, jerk off on this girl's face, because that would just be weird. Um... <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, you know, in retrospect, you're like, ah, oh, man, opportunity lost. <coughs> but seriously, we, we just sat there and froze until they finally said, okay, well, nice to meet you, and wandered out of the room. We didn't see them, I don't think, the rest of the convention. Uh, we talked to everybody we knew <laughs> about the situation, but it was strange. And that's the type of shit that was happening all the time at anime conventions. There were just like random hookups. Um, I know one time I went to a convention, my ex-girlfriend was going out with a friend. Like she like broke up with him on the way up and tried to get with me. I said no. And I used another random girl with whom I had fooled around as like a human shield to keep, you know, ex-girlfriend away. And it just got messy. Cause that's the shit that happens at anime cons. And that's why you can't go after 30. You're going to be that creepy son of a bitch who's there just trolling for underage chicks. Don't be that guy. And definitely, if, if you go, don't be Sailor Skank. Don't be the one guy who's just old and nasty and hairy and just gross, dressed up as a Sailor Moon character. Put the fuku down. Go home. Leave these poor, horny teenagers alone. Do not hang out at anime conventions. Um... I'd like to go back to an anime convention. I think that, you know, they had a lot more uh, vitality, a lot more life, even if you ignore the random sex. Um, there's a lot more fun to be had. There's a, a sense of community uh, that just seems to be more in, ingrained with anime fandom than there is in a comics fandom. Um, but really, I've not watched a single show in years if anything, I go back and watch reruns. You know, I'll, I'll watch Macross Plus for like the 8,000th time. But, you know, I want to check out one called uh, Demon Bane, simply because apparently it's uh, Lovecraft plus mechs, which is, you know, right in my wheelhouse. That's something I'll watch. But no, I don't anticipate hitting uh, any anime cons anytime soon. Um, the last one I went to was one of the Ohio cons here in Columbus, uh, just so I can get some pictures. I have not taken pictures since... Wizard World Chicago in 2010. Um, I'm going to stick with comic conventions just so now I can avoid random situations like Camp Bukaki. So, like I said in uh, the previous video, you know, one or two back, if you had any weird experiences like that at an anime con, let me know because these stories, especially, again, we can get into a lot more detail about all the shit that happens at these cons. Just give me a little hint. You know, let me know what sort of wackiness happened. Make a response video. Tell your story of anime craziness. And uh, maybe we'll get some really neat stories out of this stuff. So that was my little explanation as to why James, Matt, uh, pardon me, James, um, Wes, and I 
are always going to be tied together by the strange what the fuckness of Camp Pukaki. You guys have a lovely evening, afternoon, what have you, and I'll talk to you again soon.